lovely lot. It's half ten and I'm hitting the road. I've deliberately left it a bit later because I need to drive around the Oxford Bypass to get to where I want to go because I'm heading off to the Cotswolds and there's no point doing that during rush hour because it's horrible. So Lee and I stayed in bed till about quarter past nine and I have now packed Spog up for a night away in the Cotswolds. Lee has gone into town with Kenzie get Hot Wheels from the toy shop. Um, that's what they're doing. I have to say he's braver than I am for going into shops. He does it far more often than I do. It'll do Kenzie good to go out and to go into town because he doesn't come with us very often into town these days. Um, and I don't want it to become a thing. We spent a long time both the boys were on the autistic spectrum we spent a long time literally weekend after weekend going into town with them um doing shops and you know it was it was kind of a a what's it called like an immersion thing where you immerse somebody in things that they find slightly stressful um in little doses on a regular basis and it kind of desensitizes them we gave up the supermarket that was too much we ended up getting uh, online shopping because supermarkets always ended up in a meltdown from brendan um but yeah we we went every week into one of the two sort of local towns and just one of the three local towns actually sort of shopping areas yeah i don't want it to go backwards i really don't um kenzie's get very comfortable with being at home which is great because his confidence and everything over lockdown has really increased and his stress levels have reduced dramatically and he's got his voice back and i'm hoping it stays in many ways this virus has done the world of good for him it really has and I just I am a little bit worried about how it'll be when he goes back to school but he's going into upper school which is slightly different it'll have subjects that he's picked and he'll also have a land and environment lesson twice a week and land and environment is a double lesson twice a week um, so that's like a good out of his five lessons in a day that's two of them um, and it's and it's outdoorsy gardening bits and growing things. There is sort of one practical lesson a week and then outdoorsy bits for the rest of it. But it's a small group of like-minded people. Um, just think, it's almost gonna be a bit like therapy for him, or at least that's what I'm hoping. So when the other lessons get a bit much, he's got that to look forward to, which is a little bit like a therapy session of doing outdoorsy animal care chill out stuff you know you can go and collect eggs or stroke a guinea pig or something anyway anyway i'm gonna go and fill spog up because he's a bit hungry and a little bit thirsty and hit the road properly hit the road yay only for a night but Friday I'm hitting the road for a long weekend. So, going up north. Right, so oh, we've got a traffic jam.
the way down there is Cheltenham. The city of Cheltenham. That's not really the view I want though. <laughs> and there's the hills in the background over there. I want to face the other way. I've arrived at Cleve Hill. I pro could probably park up here for the night to be honest. Um, it's got some sort of telecommunications tower thing so I imagine signal's really good. Looks like free parking. Doesn't say anything that I can see about no overnight parking. You just kind of park along this track at various points. I've come up to the top of the track and there's quite a lot of cars up here now but I imagine later on it probably quietens down a bit. It may be a place that lads congregate with their cars and stuff but I don't know. Um, I'm just making myself a thermos of tea and then I'm going to go and check out and apparently Cleve Hill is the highest point in the Cotswolds and if it's where I think I am there's some very nice sort of mountainy bits but I don't know we'll find out when I when I get out and explore a bit as to whether this is where I think I am. I've been watching various videos of places to go. Um, yeah, I might have parked in the wrong spot. Who knows? Who knows? Either way, it's an adventure. So I'm going to make my tea and yes, go exploring the hilltop. I'm on a very wonky slope right now, so I probably wouldn't want to park here. <laughs> it's not very straight. Um, it's fine. It's enough for making tea and stuff. It will do. Let's go exploring, shall we? Clee Common, a nationally important resource for people and wildlife, Gloucestershire's largest common, an area of 400 hectares, which is a thousand acres, the highest land in the Cotswolds, reaching 330 metres above sea level. A site of special scientific interest and has three scheduled ancient monuments. It is privately owned, but open to the public. You can enjoy walking, fantastic views and a landscape, rich in geology, archaeology and wildlife. The hill fort, the cross dyke and the ring are the ancient monuments. See the mountain ranges in the distance? You'll have to excuse the wind. But that there is Cheltenham and I believe that is Cheltenham Racecourse. <laughs>
found the trick point. So we've got uh, the Black Mountains, which are directly ahead, I believe. Those are the Black Mountains, are those Black Mountains there? Then I think that little bit sticking up over there is Sugarloaf Mountain. And Sandhurst Hill is next to it. And May Hill, which is further over, I think. Sugarloaf Mountain sounds like a good mountain to climb. And then that's the Malvern Hills. There's a nice little church down there. The sun's come out and it's gorgeous. You can see far more of the hills than you could before. A few sheep have come to say hello. The common is maintained by cattle and sheep and what have you grass down, fertilising as they go. What is it about flipping animals when I take a picture of them? They've got to defecate <sighs> or urinate or something else disgusting on camera. Every time. Uh, the rocks of Cleve Common there are the rocks of Cleve Common. Many, many, many rocks. It says the limestone rocks of the Cotswold formed about 170 million years ago from deep layers of sediment settling in shallow tropical sea. Later on, the sea levels were lowered, the sat land surface was raised up and the Cotswold Hills came into existence. Hmm, there we go. So the fault comes down that way, where that line is. Uh, and there is another one there. Those are the fault lines. And those there are the main beds of division. So that line there, and that line there, in that line there are the main bed divisions. And unconformity, there's a word for you. Geologists Association of 1858. Loads of bivalves look like they found here. Loads of them. But I suppose they would be if it was underground tropical sea. Coral, ammonites, sea urchins, tube worms. I find a lot of those. And this, Bryzoa, is that how it's pronounced? I found a lot of these uh, near where I live actually. The rocks formed from layers of sediment deposited over a period of nine million years with a gap of two to three million years during this time. Hmm. Harder body parts of dead coral, shellfish, ammonite, sea urchins were fossilized in the beds of sediment. Each bed contains some different fossils because animal species changed during the period of formation. Well, there you go. So between those gaps that I showed you where the dotted lines are, there's the different eras Unconformity, yeah, that was the word we used, wasn't it? The upper surface of the middle inferior oolite is covered in oysters and burrowed by sea animals. This shows that there was a time delay, the uplift and erosion before the sediment of the upper inferior oolite beds was laid down, and unconformity. Wow. I did not know that. There you go. A little bit about the limestone rocks and uh, how the Cotswolds was formed many 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 years ago. A random guy look sunbathing on the common he looks a bit lost. I'll leave him there in case some child is looking for him. I need to be heading back the way I came a bit Oh, I can see the layers quite well here, look. It's a lot of upping and downing. 
And over there is where I'm parked. This is the nearest thing I've seen to a rolling quarry. And I need to head towards those pylons up on the top of the hill over there. It's a good job I have a reference point for where I parked, otherwise I'd be stuffed. So I'm going to go over those hills. It's so peaceful on this side. Apart from that chainsaw or whatever it might be, it is so much more peaceful. <laughs> Right, I'm going to follow down here and then along that path because I want to go and have a look at this bit and then up and up and then I need to kind of head that way. I'm running low on battery as well, I'm down to 15% so I need to start conserving my battery. That's what happens when you vlog, take photos and Pokemon Go all from the same device. Wow, that needs a photo. Just look at that, and it's silent. Really silent. It's starting to rain. Let's have a little look in here, shall we? little tree looks like a cave that's been partly blocked partly blocked up what a cool little spot even if it is raining this would probably be a nice good sheltered spot for a wild camp <laughs> if you're into your wild camping Sorry about the uh, heavy breathing. I'm very out of practice with the climbing. And I need to get into practice because in a few days I'll be going up a mountain with Daryl and Keith from Camper Van Tails. Slowly getting closer, slowly, but just Getting closer, slowly. Wow, there's a lake down there, totally missed that, but I'm not going back down there. That is beautiful. Come on feet. Oh. The last bit of this walk, that was a sight for sore eyes cause this last bit has been hard work. Oh my goodness. Because I was all the way over there. Whew. Yeah, that's worn me out. Hold on. It's exhausting. All the flies wouldn't leave me alone because I was sweaty. I need a strip wash. Oh, hold on, phone call. That phone call was somebody looking for childcare, but I couldn't help them um, because I'm full. Or, or I will be when we're all back to normal. Um, so I just turned the phone off and charged it. I've been sat here for about an hour. So it was nearly three o'clock when I arrived back at the van. It's now just gone four, I think. I have, I literally did a strip down wash because I was so hot. My t-shirt where my backpack was, was drenched. Um, I just stunk. So I have literally, I did a strip down wash in the van, boiled the kettle for tea, washed myself completely, sat with an ice pack on my chest for about most part of an hour. It's completely melted now and read my book <laughs> um, and decided I wasn't moving anywhere 
until the phone had charged. So the phone's at 78% or something now. Um, I've read a bit. I've had a quick snack. I've had a cup of tea. I feel so much cleaner and fresher. <sighs> That's nice. I feel good. So I think I'm either going to go to a long barrow or I'm going to go to a Roman villa. So I'm just going to do a very quick Google and see which one is closest. And then I shall take you there. Um, this is actually, I think, the perfect spot for a park up. It's actually really peaceful. Like I said, it's about four something now. There's a motorhome here and about four cars. And it's been getting quieter and quieter as the day's gone on. Um, oh, I've just noticed there's a farmer in the field collecting all the sheep that were in the field. He's putting them all into a trailer. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just got distracted. Sheep. This vest tops a little bit. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to I'm going to just Google and find out where I'm going to check out next. I may come back up here and sleep up here, or I might find somewhere else to sleep. I don't know. There's going to be lots of places to park up around here, um, so I'm not that worried. But this is a good spot. I would definitely say um, this is a good spot.